shows with ACDC and Saxon uh, do the tonight show with Conan O'Brien and even a cameo appearance in the Green Hornet. How does it feel to get some much de deserved attention this far in your career? It's a celebration, man. We worked hard for it and now we're just enjoying it. That's how it feels. Look at us. We're, a bunch we're of having happy a guys. good time! <laughs> we're a bunch of happy guys, man. You know? So it's been a little over a decade since you last had a big headlining tour, and this one's a little special because not only are you going out in support of your documentary, but you also have a new album out, This Is 13. Yeah, that's pretty much tr true. Um, the last tour that we did of the United States was pretty bad, <laughs> from my recollection. Uh, we called it the Digger Tour. And there was no record company, there was no promotion, and there's still nothing, you know? We're, we're, we're playing in front of as many people in, as we did in five weeks, in two nights. Wow. <laughs> A big difference. So let's talk about the new album, This Is 13. You guys once again worked with Chris Sangarini's uh, previous credits including Halloween, Judas Priest, e Bang, list goes on. What did he bring to the table in terms of production for the new album? What does any producer bring to the table? An objective view, which is incredibly important. Uh -huh. I go out and I sing, do it again. Impress me. That's what he brings to the table. Yeah. Somebody who's going to sit there that you have to impress. You know, so you give it all because that's the man. And when he says it's good, it's good. So, are you, what, what songs off the new album, This Is 13, have you guys been performing live? I don't know, Thumb Hang, This Is 13, Blank Blank. How's the reception been so far? Amazing. Amazing. Thumb Hang is a smash hit. And that's all. <laughs> so, This Is 13 was originally self released back in 2007, before obviously being picked up by VH1 Classic Records and re released this past September. And since that time, you guys have started work on a, a new album, Juggernaut of Justice. Uh, how far along in that process? All the songs are written, we just have to, we've got to find the time to record. We're going to be on the road till September. Wow. Yeah, we're booked really solid, like everywhere, worldwide. This is not just happening in America, it's a, it's a global phenomenon that we're part of here. Everywhere from, from Australia to South America, Asia. Europe, 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 the Netherlands, the, uh, Scandinavia, you, it's global, yeah. really, really serious. And as we all know, metal is a global thing. And this is, this is like, we went bowling for dollars, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. yeah. And we got a full on strike. Yeah, so um, your longtime guitarist, Ivan Hurd, who's been with you guys for about 12 years, uh, left the band recently. Uh, what was the reasons for Oh, well, recently as in five years ago, so it's not that recent to us. Okay. So he left after Japan. He left after Japan. Yeah. And he, he had some solos on the new album. He, he, was, he, was, he, he was really just a live cosmetic application. And like a live, live guy. He, he, this is uh, like he never player. learned the songs. Um, the he only of, learned the songs that we were playing live. The three of us have really... We, 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 we've recording. written all the, all the material. And even just hanging out and jamming like three, four days a week in our rehearsals, he was never around for those. Just, you know, he's just not one of them. It actually became weird, when weird goes, going out on stage. Why is this guy here? And then I just came, got to the point of going, you know what? I kept keep having to call this guy to get him to come out. Uh -huh. I just stopped calling. And he didn't care. And he didn't even care. Six months later, my cell phone rings. I'm going to come pick up my gear. Cool. Yeah, and then everything really took off. Yeah, I mean, it, it, yeah, yeah. yeah. What happened, you back. <laughs> so, uh, with all this recent attention, has there been kind of a renewed interest in your back catalog? Any absolutely, to? absolutely. There's a complete renewed interest in, in everything I have right now, like big time. Like people are selling autographed pictures on eBay. That's badass. Do you think uh, <laughs> our, our back catalog 
our CDs are being sold for like you know a hundred dollars a CD. Like that's the hardest stuff, hard, hard to get stuff. Uh, collectors are buying the shit, I guess. You know. Do you think it'll be uh, reissued domestically? So, yeah, yeah. We're in the works of doing all that. But the first three albums, no. Because that's why why we didn't get big to begin with. It's because of that fact. Still, those records are owned and operated by. Canadians who will not license to the United States. So the only way that you're going to get those records is by import or by actually ordering them directly from the labels. The expensive way. That's right. So speaking of those first three albums, I wanted, could you take me back to the early 80s and like tell me what was it like to be a Canadian heavy metal band during such a revolutionary period in heavy metal history? We, um, were, we were accepted extraordinarily well in England. And we went and toured there, and thank goodness we did, because that's where we met the screenwriter when he was 15 years old. Wow. See, this isn't, this isn't oh, some corporate guy came in, and I'm going to make a movie about this band. It's a guy that we met a fan. and brought into the fold of, the, of our family and the band. Not only was he a fan, he became a roadie and a dear friend. He went off to finish, finish school, lost touch with us. 20 years later, I get a phone call, come and visit me in LA. I go and visit this, the kid that I used to know who's now grown up and become a screenwriter for Steven Spielberg. Three weeks after he sees me and gets together, he tells me he's gonna make a movie. And right at that moment, I saw my destiny. I saw 30 years being instantly validated and I knew it was gonna be the greatest rock documentary ever made. Like, you know, in the early 80s where you have no internet and, you know, how, how did you even hook up all those tour dates and coordinate everything? We had, we had uh, an, an agent. We had an agent back in those days. Yeah, man. Neil Warren. Yeah. We, we had an agent that was a big time agent. That's how we got There wasn't thousands of bands making records. And you were still yeah. on Attic Records. Yeah, we were on Attic Records. Yeah. And we were we were what the clips was saying. We were one of those bands ahead of the curve with our style and our style. And, uh, it just caught on. Did you guys kind of feel like you'd made it when you guys uh, landed the deal with Metal Blade Records? And Are you kidding me? Uh, you that like was the epitome of fucking the worst. Uh, really? Yeah, and I knew it at the time. It was all the, it's all the, the uh, I, it, it's it's what came through the door. And I was really hesitant, and I spent, it, it was months before I gave in and actually went through with, with signing with that. And quite frankly, probably shouldn't have. Never been paid for it. Yeah, it was a criminal. It was a criminal. A criminal the guy's a criminal son of a bitch. And I, I go on record saying it, and I will forever. He denies it. He says he doesn't owe us money. He's a liar. That's how he does business. That's how the music business works. That's why... It, Attic Records wouldn't license our, our, rec, our early records to any American labels because what happens is, here, I'll give you virtually nothing for the recording and I'll pay you later. They never pay you nothing later. And they pay you nothing up front. So that's why. It's all the same game, man. It's a game that keeps getting played over and over and over and over again. And if, I'm, I don't lie, I say it like it is. I'm a dangerous motherfucker when it comes to this shit. I, I you the, fuck with me, I'm gonna fuck with you back. I saw that in the movie with the promoter in Europe. That's right. So, you know, prove me wrong. Where's my Where's my accounting, Mr. Slagle? Still you know, that's what I got. Where's still, my accounting? Still trying to dream up the accounting. He's he, you know, he's saying Lip shouldn't be saying that out there. Well, where's my accounting? Where's the accounting for 20 years, man? Where do you come off? Sell, re, re putting out a record you haven't even got the rights to in Europe. Which one's that? The, the live album. That that contract was finished years ago. He put the damn thing out this it, last year, without permission, without it, without anything. I had to actually call my lawyers to get to go after it, to go find out what the hell's going on. But hey, you shouldn't be saying anything about me, lips. You fuck with me, I'll fuck with you. That's the way I am, man. Don't, I, I, I'm, 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 I'm out. It's, it's not anger, it's not vengeance. It's what's right is right. What justice is justice. 